One of my favorite procedures to do in my practice is surgery for a buried penis. And the reason is it's a very gratifying procedure and can be really life changing for a lot of folks. So it's kind of that type of plastic surgery I love where it's aesthetic in that we have to get the aesthetics right, but there's a lot of function that depends on this too. And oftentimes when I see folks who have suffered from buried penis, it has been going on for years. It's one of these diagnoses that kind of lives at the intersection of two different specialities urology and plastic surgery. Not a lot of plastic surgeons like to operate on the penis and not a lot of urologists like to do liposuction, for example. So oftentimes um, folks who I've seen with this problem have been misdiagnosed for a long time or didn't realize that there was help available. Typically what happens in a patient with buried penis, we oftentimes see it in folks who are obese or especially folks who've lost a lot of weight. And what can happen is with weight loss, there is a large amount of deflation, especially folks who carry a lot of their weight in the pubic area. And what can happen is the penis itself can retract into the body. There's telescoping into the body as the surrounding skin deflates. This can cause a lot of problems, obviously with hygiene, with urination, with sexual function. And over time, folks may get recurrent rashes or even famosas um, if they have a foreskin present and lots of different problems. And oftentimes when I see patients who've had this problem, they, like I said, thought it was just maybe because they're overweight and nothing could really be done. Typically, we're doing a couple of things when we're fixing a buried penis. First of all, we're gonna get rid of all of that, or not all, but most of that surrounding annoying tissue. So we do this in different ways, such as a monsplasty, which is basically a pubic lift, or a lot of my patients will add in a tummy tuck at the same time if they choose to do that, which is a little bit more extensive, but flattens out uh, the belly as well as the pubic area. We oftentimes use liposuction to get rid of uh, the extra weight at the pubic area itself. And then in addition to that, we'll anchor the penile anatomy to the surrounding skin to prevent any more uh, telescoping back in again. And sometimes <clears throat> we'll do this just on top of the penis or if the penis, depending on where, where the junction between the penis and scrotum is, depending on how the anatomy is there, we may tack the anatomy there also. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what to expect after this surgery. I should mention in certain cases, although it's unusual, less than 5% of the time in my practice, we may have to do some skin grafting as well. This tends to be in very long standing or severe cases where there is not enough good skin on the penis itself and we have to bring it, or use some of the uh, skin we've taken off from elsewhere to graft back onto the penis, but that is more unusual. In this video, we're gonna talk about the typical recovery most of my patients have when they undergo this procedure. So this procedure is done under general anesthetic. In most cases, it takes approximately two hours. And during that time, we're going to defat the area, do liposuction on the pubic area, and then go uh, to work at getting rid of the extra skin. Sometimes, like I said, we'll just be removing the skin in the pubic area itself, or more often a patient may decide to do an abdominoplasty as well, which is a lot more involved with a larger scar across the bottom of the belly. And we'll actually dissect all the way up underneath, pull the skin really tight, bring the belly button out through a new hole and recontour the whole front of the abdomen at the same time. Sometimes patients will choose to do liposuction of the abdomen at the same time to get a more athletic look while we're there. Then after that, we'll make usually um, uh, a little incision underneath the penis itself if we need to, to tack things down there. And on the inside already, we'll have tacked the penis into uh, the new position. Now, after the surgery, the bane of the surgery is swelling, swelling and bruising, especially anytime we're gonna use liposuction, it is very impressive. And to the untrained eye, it always looks like something wrong because basically like having a black eye, we've all seen that, that is what's going on with your entire genitalia. And because everything must go south, gravity, 
pulls in one direction, a lot of that swelling is going to end up in the scrotum and it's going to take weeks for that to resolve. So that's the most annoying thing after surgery, but bruising across the whole area is very common as well. And so most of my patients will take one to two weeks off work, depending on what their job is. If they can work remotely, most patients will maybe go back to doing some in the first week. Um, most office jobs about two weeks, but strenuous jobs and working out, that's more like six to eight weeks after the surgery itself. With liposuction, swelling is always epic. We do some compression on there, um, depending on what area we focused on, but typically you won't see your results for between three to six months from that, just because of the swelling. But again, this is one of the most gratifying procedures I do. Patients tend to be very happy after it. And it, like I said it really kind of lives at a sweet spot for my practice because I do a lot of genital surgery and a lot of plastic surgery obviously I'm a plastic surgeon um, so uh, it's a, a little niche area that um, is growing more so as awareness grows uh, about this condition and uh, things that can be done to fix it.